What's up, YouTube? I'm back in the still standing garage and I'm working on the 83 Regal today. I'm gonna be working on the fuel system. I do need to give you guys an update on the Monte over there. I still need to cut and buff it. For those of you that are new to the channel, I did paint this Monte over here a while back. Uh, the last video that I did was, was on these right here. I'm painting the bumpers and other miscellaneous pieces like the mirrors and stuff like that. I do need to put these on, obviously. But before I get back to the Monte over here, I do want to finish up some things on the Regal here. I want to get it up and running to the point where I feel confident in driving it long periods of time without it breaking down. So today, like I said, I'm working on the fuel system. I do want to replace the fuel pump. This is a brand new Carter fuel pump. I did get it at Napa. That's the box right there. So this one's brand new. I do want to install this. I've never changed the fuel pump on the, on the motor here even after I rebuilt it millions of years ago. But before I do that, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure I know what the pressure of the fuel that I'm getting to the, to the carburetor. Right now, all I have is a filter and I don't know how much pressure I'm giving the carburetor. These carburetors here, or well, at least this one, this is part number 1404 from Edelbrock. It's a performer carburetor, supposed to have about six PSI and i don't know how much i'm giving it so i want to install this first before i change out the the fuel pump here so that way i can see what the difference is and if there is any difference i did buy the cheap one here just so i can measure what it is uh hopefully it gives me a good reading so let me go ahead and install it so the car's warmed up i already went ahead and installed the gauge so it's right above 5 psi uh, which is not bad actually so when we install the new one hopefully it's gonna bring it up closer to six the new one is rated at 5.7 psi so we'll see that's minimum 5.7 psi minimum so hopefully it works out and another thing to point out is i don't like the way this whole fuel line is the rubber and the hard line going down to the pump i don't like it so i am planning on replacing this this is just a test here I want to go with that, that nice looking elbow brock one that actually goes under the choke here so I, I, I don't like that there but it is what it is so let's start putting on that new pump the location of the fuel pump is on the driver's side of the block it's right behind the power steering pump right here you can barely see it back there where i'm pointing you can barely see it so i don't know if i mentioned this in the beginning of the video but this is a 3.8 v6 so let me go down there and i'll show you where the fuel pump is it's a better view uh, another thing is that these fuel pumps, they don't ride on a rod like uh, like the 350s or the other small block um, engines. So this one, you could just pop it in and pop in or pop out the old one, pop in the new one. Supposedly, we'll find out. It's always it always sounds easier than than uh, how it's done. Let's go. And here's the pump right here. This one right here. Here's my line from the gas tank to the fuel pump, and then this hard line right here is the one that goes to the carburetor. So the one that I am going to remove first is going to be this one right here, the rubber one. And then I'm going to put this bolt right here. Let me see if I can get in the camera. And then I'm going to put this bolt right here in the hose. So that way I don't siphon out all the gas and spill it all over the place. I do have a catch can down here that will hopefully catch some of the gas that's going to spill out. Let's see if we make a mess, catch on fire with this light that's under here. So pop that one out of the way. Hopefully I don't shower myself with gasoline something popped though but car is on jack stand pop this one in there i'm not that much spilled out so that's pretty good all right now for the hard line so the top one is actually a three quarters and that's the size of it it's a three quarters the bottom one here is five eighths so i'll be using both of them so that way i'm not stripping any of that or messing anything up even though this fuel pump is going to be replaced but still you never know. I mean, it still works, but I want to see if I could get more gallons per hour or more pressure to the carburetor. Let me see. Come on, let's not bust this. No more knuckles. No, no busting. Come on. I have to put some PB blaster. It's not going to be All right, so I try to take off the, the line here off camera, and it's super hard to take off. The actual fuel pump started uh rotating even with me having the three quarter on here because it's kind of hard down here to try to use both hands and try to push and pull so what i'm planning on doing is trying to take off the whole line with the fuel pump all together as an assembly hopefully that works out so time to remove the fuel pump from the block so to remove that last bolt the one that's closest to the block over here i ran an extension 
with the swivel at the end of it and I'm taking it off now. I can't really show you where it's at, but it's it's on the other side of the pump. I can only imagine how difficult that's gonna be to reinstall. All right, and with that one removed, now time to remove the one that's on this side, which is this one right here where my index finger's at. Uh, like I said, it's a half inch socket. I don't even think I mentioned it, but it is a half inch socket, so I am gonna take this one off. I'm actually gonna use a wrench here, a half inch wrench to remove it. I'm gonna take that one off and then hopefully I could take off the whole assembly on one shot. All right, so the fuel pump is completely unbolted off of the block. I did uh, unplug or disconnect the fuel line up there to the carb. So hopefully I could take this out in one shot, one assembly. We're gonna find out. If not, we'll burn down the whole car. Kinda wanna get a new line. Like I said, I wanted to update this, but the whole point is the fuel pump, not the, the whole situation here. So let's see if we could, you know what I need? I need somebody to be up there and trying to guide it for me, but that's what happens when you work alone. Nobody's here. Let me see if I could get somebody to help me maneuver it down because it looks like it's getting stuck up there. All right, YouTube, it's finally out. I did the thing that I didn't want to do. I wanted to save this line, so I had to cut it. Couldn't fish it through even with the uh, help of somebody else. But the pump is out. It's all busted. So I do need to replace this line. I mean, I could go the real cheap way and just put like a rubber line here and then... Uh, tie it back up right here but it took me a long time even just to cut it to get the little pipe cutter in there to cut that out and rotate it but uh, i think i'm just gonna upgrade it and then uh, we will get to the whole installing it back in hopefully it goes in a lot smoother than than it was taking it off what did i say in the beginning of the video or somewhere in the video i said that seems so simple but it's easier said than done all right youtube so while i'm waiting for these parts to get here to replace that line that i cut I did start cleaning off the old gasket, which is right there. I hit it with the screwdriver that's here and then with the razor blade. I did also put the new one on. I did put some of this, uh, the right stuff gasket maker on the block just a little bit uh, with my finger and then put the gasket on there. So I put the gasket on there so that way it could stick on it. And we're gonna try to feed the, the new pump in there and hopefully I'm able to bolt it on without an issue. I think the, the bolt that's closest to the block is gonna be the hardest one, but we'll see. Uh, I wanna bolt it on, and if I run into any issues now, I'd rather try to figure it out while the parts are getting here. So we'll see, let's go. All right, YouTube, so what I am gonna do is I did put the bolt already on the pump here, as you can see here. I wanna see if it would actually catch and it will stay on there, this, this one right here on this side. If not, I'm gonna put some gasket maker on here so that way it can stay on the pump itself. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to show you the pump going into the hole, but hopefully it goes in without any issues, but that is rarely the case. So let's see. All right. But let's see if we can get this one on this side started and then we can play with the one in the back. So that one there is in, but the one up against the block is the one that uh, didn't go in the hole, obviously. So I'm going to try to see if I can maneuver it in. I'll bring you guys back on as soon as I uh, bolt it on. And there it is. It's all tightened up. It didn't take as long as I thought it was going to take. Probably like 10 or 15 minutes to tighten everything up. Uh, that bolt in the back that I thought it was going to give me a lot of problems didn't actually give me any problems at all. I did rotate the, the block here or the engine here. Uh, from that bolt right there. I did rotate it just to make sure nothing was binding up with the pump and everything looks pretty good. I don't want to turn on the car and hear a bunch of metal clacking it all up in there. So we're good to go. Now all I got to do is wait for those parts to get here, those lines that I ordered. Uh, you guys are going to see it in like a couple seconds. For me, it's going to take about a week. So let's go. And parts are in. I got the fuel line kit that goes to the carburetor. Comes with a fuel filter. Got that. And then I got the, the little adapter that uh, you can hook up the pressure gauge to. You can see the little hole right there. You can hook up the pressure gauge to it. And then I got the line that goes down to the fuel pump. 
So this one right here, it does come with the fitting already, a 90 here, this one here. But I had to order a different one because my fuel pump is a different fitting. This one right here. So I got to put this one on the fuel pump. And then the line that goes up to the carburetor. And then it's this one and then that one in between. So let's start putting it on. I'm going to start at the bottom first and then we'll work on top. Let's go. All right, we're back down here. I already replaced the rubber hose right here that comes from the tank to the pump i did put a a fuel filter here then i did replace this one it's just tucked away in the fan shroud right now out of the way i did already run my fuel line down i just fed it through it's not connected up there but i fed it through i didn't want to be coming up and down or getting in and out of down here because it kind of sucks so right now what i am going to put is i'm going to put the the 90 here that's going to connect to the fuel line there that's going up to the carburetor so this one right here, it actually swivels, so it turns. So it's pretty cool. So I'm going to tighten it up. So these are AN fittings, so they don't have to be tightened down way too too hard. Because you could mess them up. And uh, they seal pretty good once, uh, once you tighten them up, you snug them up. So let me tighten this one up. And for this one, it's going to be three quarters. So I am going to hold the pump. And then I am going to tighten it up. Not too much. I don't want to scratch the, the color off of there. But uh, who's going to see down here, right? Uh, it's on there pretty good. All right, so that's on there. Let's turn this bad boy around. I want it to be right here. I did get this fuel line with an angle here. I don't even remember the degrees, but it's a little bit of an angle. Because if I would have got it straight, it would have came out this way and I would have to kind of loop it up and that would suck. I was looking for a U style one. Um, I couldn't find one. I mean, at least that I liked. So we'll see if this one works. If it doesn't work, then, then I'm going to have to figure something out. But let's see. It looks like it's going in there pretty good. There it is. It's going in. All right, let's tighten this one up. I'm going to hold the, the elbow here. Tighten this one down. This one is a 11 sixteenth. And it's the same thing. Not too tight. Just snug it up. And then we'll check it for leaks. And if we need to tighten it up, we'll tighten it up some more. I think that's good right there. Good thing is that I can move this around. Hopefully it doesn't leak from the actual joint. You see how it wibbles like, uh, swivels like that? But that's how they're made. We'll find out. And then um, it's not too close. It may look close on the camera now that I'm looking at it. It may look like it's going to hit the belt here. But it's not. I got about a half inch away from it. I am going to have to check it out up there. And hopefully it doesn't try to come down and hit it, right? So I think it'll be fine. Now it's time to put on the line over here. Take off that bolt and then put on the line. Pop this one in. And we're in there. Come on, pop it in. There it is. It's on there pretty good. I like the way that everything is looking down here. I mean, before, if you look at the, the fuel filter here, it looks kind of bulky, but before, that's how the hose was running anyways. So it's not going to get in the way of anything. Everything's on here pretty snug. It's good to go down here. Let's go up top. All right, time to put this bad boy on. Yeah. So let's take off the hose here. Take this one off. Hopefully there's no gas in it. There isn't. Now let's take off this fitting. This is going to be a three quarters uh, size right there. Let me see if we could pop it off without any issues. Should have a little bit of gas coming out of there. We'll clean it up. I didn't have a washer. It's supposed to have a washer. So probably didn't have any leaks so this is the fitting that came off of there all right youtube so what i ended up doing is i ended up putting the whole thing together so here's my fuel filter and the adapter to fit the pressure gauge and obviously my pressure gauge i do want to replace this one though uh this one's kind of cheap but we'll see how it lasts and then obviously the line that goes to the carburetor so I was test fitting it as I was putting this together to see where I wanted to line up my pressure gauge and also the, the lettering on the elder block here on the fuel filter. 
So I had to remove this line here, the vacuum line that goes to the front here, just so I could keep uh, test fitting. And then I think I do need to um, adjust it a bit, but we'll see. So it's time to put it on. I'm gonna feed it down the bottom here and bring it up. And then I'm gonna get my, my bolt over here. It comes with two washers. It comes with two of these, with two of these, but I noticed that when I took off the old one, the old fitting from here, that one stayed on there. So I'm just gonna reuse that one. It's it's good, I haven't I haven't had any issues. I mean, if it starts leaking, then I'm gonna have to pop it off. Didn't wanna come off pretty easy and I didn't wanna put a screwdriver to it. So I don't wanna cross thread these. It's the worst thing that could happen. There it is, it's going in there pretty good. Tighten that up, let me see what that looks like here. So let's tighten that up. Three quarters. And don't wanna over tighten either. If it's leaking, then I'll come back and retighten everything. So now, here's the line from the fuel pump. Try to pop it in here. Let me see if I can pop it in. Camera's always in the way. I kind of want the elder block to be a little higher, but that's fine. The line popped out of where I routed it, and it's really close to the to the belt here. So I might have to see if I could uh, probably put a zip tie to the to the distributor. I don't like zip ties, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. So let me tighten this one up, and then we'll move into uh, starting it up. But I'll I'll let you guys know what I do to that hose. Let's go. All right, YouTube. So I did end up putting a zip tie around the distributor there, you see that right there? And it's not real tight, it's just on there just in case it pops off with the vibration or let's say I'm hitting the switch or whatever and there's a lot of movement, it actually uh, pops out. The zip tie will keep it from hitting the belt and busting all that out. And then I did uh, run the this hose that I removed, I ran it underneath. So it's, everything's hooked up now, it's ready to go. So what I did end up doing is I disconnected the power to the distributor so I could crank it a couple of times and hopefully get some fuel to it. And then I am gonna pour some gas in the uh, carburetor here to get the engine running and get the pump to um, to go ahead and pump that fuel all the way through. And then we could check the, the pressure again. Now, when it comes to the, the mechanical pumps, from the research that I've done, you don't have to um, prime it. It's just run it and it should be fine. So let me crank it a couple of times and then we'll see. All right, I'm gonna crank it a couple of times. And let's see what happens there. I think that should be enough. Let's put some gas in it. Some gas all up in here. Let's crank it. See if there's any oil or gas leaks. Turned down pretty good. There's a big one. See that right there? Whoa, it was squirting all over the... So it came out of there, so I am gonna have to put on that that, um, that washer that I didn't take off. I'm gonna have to take off this one. That one was on there pretty good, so let me replace that there. Clean it all up. I'm not sure if I caught it on camera, but um, it was pretty much squirting from one side all the way this way, and I could tell it went down there and everywhere. So let me clean that up. That's the only leak that I see so far. All right, let's try that one more time. So far, nothing is leaking. Everything's looking pretty good. I did put on that washer on the on the boat here, and it's working pretty good. Now, I didn't activate the choke. I didn't activate it because I wanted to see how it would turn on nice and slow. I didn't want it to idle too high, but look, it's idling normal right now, and look where it's at, like six and a half PSI. And before, it was like right above five PSI. So can't wait to try it out and see how it turns on on, on a cold start because before when I turned it on on a cold start it will turn on for like a minute I would say a couple of seconds then it will turn off then I have to keep cranking it and cranking it 
and my whole theory was that the fuel pump wasn't strong enough or wasn't good enough to pump enough pressure into the carburetor. I'm gonna let it warm up. I'm gonna open up the garage over here so I don't poison myself. For all right, YouTube, and there it is. Brand new fuel pump and all those lines that I put on it looking real good, no more leaks. Uh, I did go from five PSI or a little bit over five PSI with the old fuel pump to now having about six and a half PSI. So hopefully that makes a big difference when I'm taking off and I'm driving it and also on cold starts. Now that that's done and taken care of, we're going to go to some of the basics, changing the oil on the tranny with the filter and also the oil in the motor. And then I do want to take out the antifreeze that it has in the old radiator or the old antifreeze uh, out of the radiator and put some new one in there. So stay tuned for those videos and then stay tuned for that video that's going to come up on me cutting and buffing the monte over there. So I know a lot of people are asking about that one. So stay tuned. Let's go. Oh.